Hello, I'm Tom and thank you for purchasing one of our MP200 Isle of Wight Group centrifugal oil separators. I'd like to welcome you to our training video where I shall be taking you through a step-by-step -step guide to the cleaning and servicing procedure. The first thing to remember before starting to work and taking the, the separator apart is that we must isolate the high pressure oil line. This means either you use the isolation valve or completely turn the engine or piece of equipment off. I would also recommend using some gloves just to protect your hands. We can then start to remove the band clamp, which is the first stage of the disassembly. You turn the band clamp in an anti-clockwise direction until it becomes loose. And you can then slide the band clamp down onto the bottom of the centrifuge or place it somewhere else. The second part is to remove the cover assembly. Again we have a left hand thread so please turn the cover assembly in a clockwise direction to loosen. Once loose you can then remove from the housing assembly. It's worth just checking the o-ring at this point just to make sure it's not damaged but if not it doesn't need to be replaced. We can then start to remove the bowl assembly but lift it initially, just 10 millimetres or so, just to drain the oil from the bowl before you then remove to the dirty area. Okay, we're now at the stage where we need to disassemble the bowl assembly. We need two spanners and a hook spanner which come as a kit. We also have a tool for scraping out some of the dirt. We have a mallet and we also have a a pointy tool that we can use to remove the o-rings. First thing to do is lie the bowl assembly down. We then need to take our two spanners to remove the cover nut. Okay, that's loose enough. We can use our hands. We can turn back upright. We then remove the bowl cover nut and the washer. And we can now remove the bowl wall and the top turbine. To remove the top turbine from the bowl wall we just use a mallet. Gently knocking all the way around. Gently ease out the impeller. If it doesn't come out, you may need to just give it a knock from the inside. We now need to remove the mesh that's inside the turbine impeller, and this needs to be discarded. And these are the main parts disassembled. Now we're on to the cleaning phase. We've got the main distributor with the bowl discs and the bearing tube. First thing to do is just check that the o-ring is in good condition, it's not brittle or any cracks or any damage, which is not. The second thing is just to check the bowl discs. Now these have oil on them but there's no sludge inside so they can just be left. And the third bit is we have some sludge down the bottom of the distributor. So we just use a tool, again a non-metallic tool so we don't damage the separator to just remove any sludge. There we go, and that part is done. We're now going to clean the top turbine impeller. I can see there's some sludge at the top. So again, if we just use our tool, like so. Another thing to check again is the O-ring of the top turbine impeller here. So we have two here. Just again check that they're not damaged, they're not brittle, otherwise they need to be replaced. But these look in good condition. Next, we come to the main sludge cake in the bowl wall. So we use our tool to get behind the paper insert. We just get behind with our tool, again non-metallic tool, and push all the way down to the bottom the bowl wall. Okay, 
that's coming away. You should then just be able to, once loose, remove, hopefully in one piece, and discard. So then we can just clean with some lubricant and use a clean cloth to make it as clean as possible. You can also wash these in a suitable fluid that may end up in your oil system. The same for the distribution plate and distribution impeller. Give it a white ground, make sure it's nice and clean. But again, you can leave the bowl discs as they are. Also give a white ground for all other items. We also need to ensure that the nozzles which power the bowl are clean and free from restrictions. The best way to do this is if you have a compressed air supply just to make sure the nozzles are clear. One thing you may need to do if the discs are dirty and the sludge cake inside is to remove them. The first step is to actually remove the o-ring. You can then just lift the discs off. Like so, and then you need to use your hook spanner. To untighten and again left hand thread so to untighten we turn clockwise you can then slide the locking nut off the bearing tube and can remove the impeller from the assembly first thing to do is the top turbine impeller and we need to if you have taken the O-rings off and replaced them, we need to replace the O-rings. When replacing the O-rings, we, we recommend and use a silicon grease in this case to make the reassembly easier. And then we just place in the groove, make sure they're both greased. We can now replace the mesh. This should be a new mesh. We place inside the support, making sure that the overlap is on the opposite side to the impeller ribs. We then take the top turbine impeller You'll notice that there is a notch here which links up to the notch in the top turbine plate and then push with your thumbs to secure making sure that the o-ring's not got caught. The next stage is to reassemble the distributor plate so we need to replace the distributor impeller. Again, there is a notch that will locate the impeller, like so. Again, we need to replace the distributor O-ring, put some grease on to secure. And then we replace the locking nut. Again, left-hand thread, so tighten anti-clockwise and then we use our hook spanner at the end just to, just to tighten like so. We can now replace the bowl discs if you, if you have removed them but under normal circumstances the bowl discs should not be removed. Just give them a little wiggle, slight downward pressure. Okay, and the last one. Like so. We can now replace the bearing tube o-ring. We just use a little bit of grease again. And be careful not to damage 
the o-ring when going over the threads and just checking it's in securely and in good condition. One very important thing to check at this point is that the top of the discs are actually level with the step in the bearing tube. So if you can't see a gap as in, as in this situation then it's absolutely fine but if there's a gap between the top of the discs and the step then you'll need to add additional discs to the top. Another thing to check is just that the bearings are in good condition, there's no scoring inside or misshapen and also check the bottom one. These look in good condition, no need for replacement. We can now replace the cleaned bowl wall, replace over Make sure it's square and then we push down over the o-ring, like so. We can replace with a clean paper insert. Then we put our top turbine back on. Again, make sure it's square and sits down nicely. And finally, Replace the top washer and the top cover nut. And again, it's a left hand thread, so to tighten, we need to turn anti clockwise. Lie the bowl assembly down. Use the spanners to tighten. Nice and tight so there's no leakage when you restart the separator. Okay, all parts of the bowl assembly are now put back together. Just check that there's no gaps and that everything is sealed correctly and it's ready to go. Okay, we've now got our clean bowl assembly which we can now place onto the spindle. Be careful not to damage any of the bearings. Once it's sitting down, just te test that it spins freely, which it does. Replace the cover assembly, finding the thread on the top of the spindle. And turn anti-clockwise to tighten. Just turn hand tight. There is a stop there, and now we can replace the final part of the bank lamp. And tighten the bank lamp. And the separator is now cleaned, reassembled, and ready to go again. Well that's it, thanks for watching. I hope it's been useful. If you have any further questions or queries, you can refer to our installation and servicing manual or don't hesitate to contact us here at IW Group.